Thanks, Phil. Thank you. Here we go. All right. You can either be super lame during this presentation and just sit there quietly, or you can bring the energy for me because I have a ton of slides to get through. So give me some energy. Thank you. All right. Pray to the slideshow gods. <laughs> All right. Over the last few years, uh, there's been a big change in the way that we talk about web development. If you notice, the client just disappeared. Uh, it seems that the server is dominating all of our conversations now. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I, be I believe that most of us have become so focused on server-side perfection that we have left the client in decay. Poor client. So this server-side obsession has left us with some extremes. On one end, we've lost simplicity of building apps with low cognitive overhead, simple programming models. And on the other end, we're very focused on primitives and minimalism, but we've lost a lot of the magic and flexibility that makes us productive with less effort. I have been desperately searching for something in the middle, something that is pragmatic, has flexible abstractions, powerful primitives and control when I need it. And that's why I've been building Tanstack Start for the last eight months. It's a new meta framework for React, and it's built on lessons that I've learned while I'm working on tools like Tanstack Query and Router. And it should look a little familiar because it's loosely based on the same framework toolkit that powers our cousin framework, Solid Start. Tanstack Start has a very simple mission. Deliver the best client-side authoring experience possible, and then layer on powerful and flexible server-side primitives that don't sacrifice performance or your developer experience. It's unapologetically focused on being the best routing, caching, and type safety experience you've ever had. Three of the most important features, in my opinion, that have been deprioritized and underinvested historically by many frameworks. But they're crucial for delivering a very delightful developer and user experience. To accomplish this, Start begins by building on top of Tanstack Router. Routing is the heart of any framework and also where a bulk of the client side state management should happen. And Tanstack Router is perfectly suited to the task. It's 100% type safe, end to end, fully inferred. It's really unmatched. I can't state that enough. And the URL state management primitives in it are just so much fun to work with. And it has very deeply integrated data fetching and caching primitives. So let's start with the type safety. All of the basic stuff is fully type safe and inferred. In fact, when you write with Tanstack Router, you don't write TypeScript. In fact, you don't even see any TypeScript, but it's fully type safe end to end. There's no second guessing if your routing's gonna break when it hits production. And there's definitely no more shooting yourself in the foot with bad links or missing search parameters. Beyond these basics, we've gone the extra mile to support things like strict relative navigation, nested search parameters, type safe route middleware, and a lot of other next gen routing features that I don't have time to talk about today. Um, but needless to say, we've made sure that the TypeScript language service provider can scale the thousands, like tens of thousands of routes with the most complex types, all inferring from schemas and Zod and you name it, uh, and it doesn't compromise any IDE performance at all. So whether you're building uh, an app with 10 routes or 10,000, you're not gonna notice a difference in your IDE. And it took a lot of work to get there. We're very proud of it. Tanstack Router also takes URL state management very seriously. Not only should we be storing more of the client state in the URL so that it can be shared and bookmarked and be historical, but we also deserve way better tools for managing state in the URL if we plan on doing that. So Tanstack Router ships with deeply integrated search param validation, which essentially means that each nested route can stack validation schemas for only the search params that they need. And finally, have some reliability that the magic input box at the top of the browser is actually gonna produce some usable state, because that's exactly what it is, and we tend to forget that. And yes, it supports JSON. So we're gonna need some next level state management APIs that are gonna be able to handle that JSON. We packed first class state management APIs right into the router. So here's the type safe link component updating some search parameters. Here, here's an example using a reducer function to keep existing search parameters around while updating others. 
And there's also imperative versions from like use navigate. But what I think is really awesome and important is that you can update literally everything about the URL in a single transaction for a nice clean history stack. In fact, you get a lot of very complex, difficult problems solved for you out of the box, like referential stability between renders and updates and immutability. How do you get immutability out of the URL? Serialization and parsing, and just tons of performance optimizations. A lot of work goes into this, uh, including achieving the holy grail of fine-grained subscriptions based on the URL, which essentially means components will only re-render when a part of the URL state that they rely on changes. I don't know of many other routers that can do that. And this is just the client-side state stuff. Like, if I stopped here, it would be a great client-side only framework. In fact, there's a lot of developers happily using it just as such today. Um, but the real fun starts when we talk about server state. And if you've heard me talk about server state before, I get, I get pumped about it. But there's a, new, there's a new twist on it this time. Because to go full stack, Tansac Start needed to support very simple server-side rendering which means we needed the, the ability to host render critical data out of React and into the router. To do this, we adopted a loader pattern in Tanstack Router, very similar to Remix. It allows you to ensure data is ready, or at least getting ready, before React begins to render. The difference, however, is that Tanstack's, uh, Tanstack Router's route loaders are isomorphic. So they run both on the server during SSR and on the client before each navigation. And this unlocks some really cool patterns. First of all, loaders can return data. There's nothing new there. And that data is serialized to the client during SSR and rehydrated with your app. Now, this is where most routers stop managing your server state for you. Say you were to leave the page and come back later, you would need to wait for that loader again because the router isn't caching anything normally. At this point, I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking. Sounds like a perfect job for Tanstack query. <laughs> and normally you would be right. But we didn't leave Tanstack right on the dust when it came to caching. We definitely don't want to force you to use Tanstack query if something simpler would do the trick. So we did what any self-respecting framework router author would do. Whoa. And we built a miniature version of Tanstack query right into the router. Yeah. Yes. So at like 5% of the size of Tanstack query, the router's built-in caching is keyed on a combination of path name and selected search parameters and some other custom things if you want, just like a, a React query key. This tiny addition to the router can now handle stale while revalidate sequences, automatic preloading, and even granular invalidation, which is missing from a lot of our, our modern frameworks. For your users, that means that it's likely going to be instant navigations, very few spinners, if any at all, and potentially less bandwidth if you configure it correctly. But wait, what if you do want to use React Query? Well, we can do even cooler stuff. So React Query obviously opens up features like interval polling and infinite queries and offline support, and it has way better optimistic updates than we were able to pack into the router. But what I'm really excited about is use suspense query, which unbeknownst to many of you for the past few months has been packing some hidden features inside it that help us build really great integrations with routers. This ultimately enables isomorphic data fetching with a single hook. Well, what does that mean? So during SSR, use suspense query can request data, and if it's not ready, it will suspend so React can stream the rest of your app to the client. And when the query resolves on the server, its data and the remaining HTML are streamed to the client. And this is all you have to do. It's hassle-free data streaming, and then you get the best-in-class client-side data synchronization with a single primitive, and it's super flexible. It's so cool. And, and this is just one, one piece of the spectrum of, of data fetching that you can do with this setup. Do you, need, do you need your data for the in initial response? Like, is it critical data? You can await it. You can await, you know, ensure query data or, and, and just call use query, and it will be there before you even render. Or 
You can even do that without React Router, or sorry, with, without uh, Tansag Query. You can do it right in, in the router. Um, or if you need some data very quickly, but you don't want to wait to render, you can, you can delay the data and render as soon as possible by calling a prefetch query. Or you can even just defer using the built-in stuff in the router. And those promises will just stream to the client. It's really cool. This is a fun one, dynamic streaming. If you can't hoist something up to a loader, but you need it to be streamed and you need it to have SSR, you can just call use suspense query, and that's all you have to do. The one hook gets you fully dynamic streaming with SSR. And then obviously, if you want client-only data, just use query. So you get these, this great toolkit to help you decide when you want to bring your data to the client, if at all. And that's just server state. <laughs> We've only talked about server state now. Uh, and, it's, and it's really, I haven't even talked about start yet, just router and query. Uh, and before it gets a little too Christmassy up in here, <laughs> let's, finally, let's finally talk about Tansac start. So what we've learned is that Tansac start is basically 90% Tansac router and optionally Tansac query, a little bit. So the only thing left is that sugary sweet server side talk I've been withholding from you because I know you're all addicted to it. Uh, I, are you having withdrawals yet? Start server-side features are built on a pretty awesome bedrock. Uh, it uses a tool called Vinci, which is a full-stack framework toolkit, which is based on Nitro, a universally deployable server toolkit, which is based on the inevitably awesome bundler and dev server Vite. It's a great stack. This is what's helped us to build so much uh, in, so, in such little time. We're really excited about it. Um, but mainly, the first obvious feature that Start brings to Tansac Router is the server-side rendering. By adding just a little SSR entry file and a client entry to handle hydration, you're ready to support streaming, bundling, and deployment to basically any provider, all thanks to Nitro. And beyond that, you also get API routes. Thanks to Vinci and Nitro, Start has supports for API routes out of the box. We can do file-based, using a file-based API route utility, um, or you can even use tools like TRPC or Express or hook it up to whatever you want. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool and very flexible. Again, if we stopped here, it'd already be an awesome React framework, uh, but there's more. Start has server functions. This is, this is what I'm pumped about. So, okay, React just renamed their stuff to server functions. I'm still going to call them server functions, but really they're server RPC functions, okay, to be more specific. Using the create server function factory, we can co-locate our server code anywhere we want in our files and receive a server function back. And we can call that server function anywhere we want across our entire code base. It's just a function that returns a promise with whatever data that you return. It's really, really awesome primitive. You can define input validation that works on both the server and optionally the client. Um, and also, what would server functions be without middleware? Middleware is very cool. You can use create server middleware to create composable middleware for your server functions. We're not even doing API routes. If you're familiar with TRPC, yeah, middleware, but, but these, this is just server functions. These are just, we're just extracting code to run only on the server and we get middleware with it. So you can use middleware to authenticate users, you can perform logging, you can even just share reusable tasks to multiple server functions or even other nested middlewares. It's a really cool composable primitive. Compose, there it is. I was waiting for it to come up. So <laughs> the best part is that the middleware context and middleware values and server function values, all of it is fully type safe and inferred for you automatically. Uh, you, you really rarely have to write TypeScript when you're using this stuff. Uh, there's lots of other stuff that I, I don't have time to talk about. There's progressive enhancement, there's uh, re request response manipulation, streaming, 
uh, global middlewares, which are really cool. Um, you can do input validation from middlewares as well and stack up validations. It's just a lot of fun to work with. Um, and we're really just getting started. Yeah. There's one last thing, though, that I wanted to talk about that uh, I, I want to say I'm, I'm, uh, I'm bearish on, but I'm really excited to be able to dig in and support it and see what people can do with it. But we are working right now to bring React server components to TanStack Start. And it's likely going to be as easy as just returning React elements from create server function. And that's it. So hopefully we can uh, have a demo for you very, very soon. Um, TanStack Start is currently in alpha, and we're hoping to get to a beta in the next two weeks. And we're very excited about server functions and middleware, and we'd like you to come try it. TanStack.com has been running on it in production for 10 months now. Uh, that's pretty cool. And the last thing I want to say is that I have some wonderful sponsors, and I need to extend my gratitude to all of them. For Cell Clerk, AG Grid, Convex Century, UI.dev, and Nozzle. Seriously, if it weren't for these companies, I wouldn't be able to have been working so hard on Tansec as I, as I have been for the last little while. I'm very grateful to these, to these companies. Um, that's it. Come try it out.